one of the areas that I do a lot of work on is the ethics of war and conflict. And one of the very significant developments that, that um, myself and a, and a number of other scholars have been kind of teasing out over the last number of years is the question of why we should consider it to be the case that a soldier acts permissibly when he fights in a war that is not itself justified. Right? Most people think that a soldier doesn't do wrong simply by fighting in a war, even if that war is an unjust one. Right? Many people think that the war in Iraq was unjust, but they don't think that the soldiers who fought there did something wrong by doing that. But when you think about it from the kind of normative structure of interpersonal rights that I've been suggesting today, it's immediately obvious that there's something profoundly problematic and difficult about that idea, right? If a, if a soldier is fighting in a war that is not justified, he's using lethal violence against other persons, let's say persons that are simply defending their state from, a, from, from, an, aggra from an act of aggression, right? Those defending soldiers are presumably not doing anything wrong, right? They're offering harm to you, but they're offering harm that is justified in precisely the same way that a, that a, that a victim engaging in self-defense is using justified harm. So how can it be the case that a soldier using force in those cases is, 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 is using force that is, that is permissible? And I think this, you know, this raises a really, really profound uh, uh, question and problem for the way that we think about, about the rights uh, of soldiers, the way that we configure our militaries, the way that we, that we think about um, uh, the, the opportunities for, uh, for conscientious objection, for example. Um, so it's a different question, but a no less important one, I think.